On today's show, we're going to dive deeper into level two of our strategic advantage baseball process, unique pitching and hitting skills. Hey guys, welcome back to Strategic Baseball Podcast. Last episode, we started diving deeper into our strategic advantage baseball process with the first level being the competitive advantage. And we explained that that's where the baseball player development model is currently at in that there's so much focus on athleticism, mechanics, velocity, active velocity, practice habits, routines, and attitudes. Today, we're going to dive into level two, which is unique hitting and pitching skills. Jeff and Daryl here, and we help baseball players get to the next level with a strategic advantage so that they can play with supreme confidence against the best players at any level. In every episode, we promise to deliver value on the strategic side of player development to help your players compete with the players just as good, if not better than them. Today, we're going to dive deeper into level two of our strategic advantage baseball process, which is unique hitting and pitching skills. This is the level where we take the player's unique skills and master it. Daryl is a pitching strategist. I am a hitting strategist, and this is Strategic Baseball Podcast. If you are interested in joining our circle, head over to strategic dash baseball.com which you can also find in the show note and submit your email and you always get a reminder each time we release a new episode get weekly tips from daryl and i and get a pdf transcription and visual of the previous episode and much more if you are a player parent or coach who is interested in learning more about how the strategic advantage baseball process for your unique situation, please email me at Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, at athletic-mission.com or, or email Daryl at DC at startpitching.com. You can find those in the show notes, and we would love to arrange the time to talk and see how we can help you. Daryl, you've been hanging tight and listening this whole time, so how are you, man? Doing good, man. Excited to dig into this next episode. I think this is kind of the differentiator, and and let's rock this thing. I'm ready. Awesome. Well, let's get into this, man. We have the unique hitting skills and unique pitching skills. Being the second level of our strategic advantage baseball process, let's dive into this. I'm going to let you start off. Yeah, man. I think on the pitching side, the there's three things that I really want to focus on when we start talking about now that we have a base understanding of mechanics, we understand how we move, how we control our body, how we create velocity, and, and we found some consistency with that movement pattern. Now we really want to start getting into pitch development and, and mastery. And so when I break it down with these guys here at Athletic Mission, we really talk about three things, pitch matching. And I think this is undervalued. I think now with Rapsodo and Flightscope and all these different tools, hit tracks and all these different tools that are out there now, we're starting to have better conversations about it. But the truth is every pitcher moves differently. Every pitcher has got a different body type and, and, and they create power in a different way. And the consistency that we are able to help them see and pitch with that rhythm, tempo, and timing becomes eventually their pitches and their ability to command pitches. And I, and again, just to kind of lay some groundwork to this, there's three, three pieces we really break down. Pitch matching. Does the pitch really match your arm slot? Can you consistently execute that pitch inside your rhythm, tempo, and timing and really get the grip, wrist, and forearm angle and release point right? That is the basis of how we begin to, to really learn to develop and design or create a pitch. And then how do we practice it until mastery? And then the second piece of that pitch is what I call pitch mapping and, and movement mapping. Okay, now do we understand how our grip, wrist, and forearm angle, our grip pressure, our release point creates that spin 
that creates the movement. And so can we cons- or consistently and constantly execute that pitch by velocity and movement to a, con- uh, a specific location? And I call that the PVML percentage. When we start mastering pitches, I, wanna, I want pitchers more focused on can I throw that pitch by velocity and movement to a specific location on purpose more than I'm worried about ball to strike ratio. Ball to strike ratio is just the reality of what happens in a baseball game. The ability to master a pitch is not on the ability to throw it for a strike or a ball. It's on the ability to be able to throw that pitch by velocity and movement to a specific location on purpose. And then the third piece of that really is how do we master that pitch? How do we create bullpens? How do we sit here and do our preseason throwing program and and our in-season throwing program to make sure that, that we really stay focused on how do we develop the field and how do we execute that pitch within a game plan? And that's kind of the overall unique pitching skill, the kind of the three-piece framework that we use here at Athletic Mission. And the way we break this down is, is all of it goes into how do we master a pitch that goes into the decision-making process. And when we start moving into the next steps, you're going to see that the way strategy works and the way the pre-pitch routine works, the, what we teach here is really that the pre-pitch routine is all – about the decision-making process and what is that pitcher's decision-making process and then what went into the game plan, the catcher, the the coaches, the collaboration that went into it, and then really what is the, the situation and count. And see, then if we can break pitching down into nothing but a situation and count from the first pitch of the game to the last pitch of the game, now we can honestly help these players develop a strategy based on their opponent, based on the individual hitter or pitcher they're facing, and really understand how to walk away with a decision-making process that becomes baseball. It becomes the pitch-to-pitch, the bat-to-bat, and, and the inning-to-inning, and, and actually the game and the flow of the game. And so I know that's a little bit deeper, Jeff, than probably what, what we're talking about right now in the baseball world. But that's the reality of how we transition from really having the competitive advantage, having physical skills, and then how do we develop those physical skills into individual mastered skill, more of an advanced skill, and then how do we take that and and create a strategy with it? And I think that's the cool part about it. And so I think it's confusing today because I think there's so many mixed messages about how do we make that transition from projectable skill set into actually advanced advanced pitching or hitting skills but i think what you're going to see in the game now as we really individualize it and and you're seeing a lot more individualization and in the development and training that you're going to see guys start to grasp this strategic piece of it and that strategy really is the differentiator on game day especially for for the confidence of each individual player and then honestly the decision making process that that ends up becoming what pitch they decide to throw when that catcher puts a sign down. And so I think this is cool, man. This is a fun conversation that can go in, in 20 different directions, depending on who you're talking to. But at the same time, I think as you can break down on the hitting side, you really start to see this hitter pitcher chess match go on as we walk through it, which was one of the reasons why you and I ended up getting together because we like that yin yang of being able to train players and have them see both sides of it. Right. And then, and then on the hitting side, much like you said, you know, we come to a point where we have a pretty good understanding of our mechanics and, and how we move and control our body. And then now it's about being consistent within that pattern. And, and when we do that, that's when we really get into the, the mastery piece. So there's a couple things that we work on with, with on the mastery side. Uh, the unique hitting skills. Um, the guys that I get to work with, we talk a lot about swing matching. And, you know, everyone is different. And uh, there are certain things that guys can do. There are certain things that they can't do. But a lot of times, hitters don't really understand what kind of hitter they are or at least where they are at right now currently as a hitter. So we spend a lot of time getting guys to understand where they're at and right at the very moment and what they need to work on, what they need to develop as a hitter. And so we got to make sure that 
their swing is going to be able to help them and not hurt them because this is going to affect how we practice to master. Then the next piece, after we have swing matching, the next piece is what I call command hitting. And now that we've had a good understanding of how our body right. moves and how to create the bat path that we want, now we want to be able to execute situational hitting on purpose. So understanding how we can put off our A swing and hit the ball where we want it and execute in a situation. That's a really deep conversation that we have about understanding your zone, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and then understanding point of contact and what you can do with what. Then, cause that, then that brings us to the, this, what I call the stick process, which is the spin, timing, knowledge, and swing. So we hear a lot about timing. We hear a lot about the swing, but not so much about reading spin and then the knowledge of your own strike zone, your, your, your hot zone. So we feel this is a process and mastering this process will give you a strategic advantage when you get ready to go play in a real baseball game. Because at the end of the day, everything that we do and everything that we practice needs to give us a strategic advantage. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing it. Seeing the ball out of the hand, you know, identifying the tip cues and clues is a, a learned skill. But once you learn what to see, you see what you look for. So if you um, if you understand what you're looking for, your eyes of seeing it goes up as long as you're on time. So which makes you know seeing the ball hard because right. you have to understand what you're looking for, and then you got to be on time for that. But then we have the the reading the spin part, which is going to tell you a ton. And this is something that we focus on a lot at Athletic Mission. And then there's the timing piece. And, and what we tell guys is you got to be on time twice. Yep. You got to be on time first to pick up the ball out of the hand. And then second, you got to get that foot down on time. So their ability to see the ball at the release window and their ability to judge the ball right. in space, it's going to yep. affect their timing or help their timing. Which is going to lead us to the knowledge of the individual hitting zone. So what pitches do they see well? What pitches do they hit well? What pitches can they get a barrel to and hit it hard? And, and a lot of guys will think that they like an area in the zone better than other areas, or they'll think they see the ball in that area. And, and this is where we do a lot of tracking and, and try to get data on what they're seeing, where the ball's crossing, and where they're hitting it. And they've got to get a good understanding of what ball they hit well and which ones they don't. And then try to build that, try to master an area of laying off pitches that's not in their hot zone, which, again, it's what make good hitters. It's not the good hitters. It's not the pitches they swing at. It's the pitches that they take. And that's the stuff that we talk about with our guys all the time. Your ability to lay off good pitches is going to be your key to being a better hitter. Now that all comes down to knowledge or your knowledge of the, of your hitting zone. And then now if we put all this together. Now we're able to put off our best swing. So. This is overall the, the unique hitting skill framework that we use here at Athletic Mission. So, you know, all of this is for us to execute um, in a real game, for us to be able to um, have a game plan that we can actually deliver on because we have a master skill of our swing and then our command hitting and our stick process. And you're going to see as we go through the next couple levels um, of the, the process, you know, it, it, it's our pre-pitch routine and our decision-making process and our game plan, you know, based on account and situation. And when we look at baseball, like Daryl said, that, that's all this is. It's a series of situations that count. And now we can develop a strategy. So this is what we we're talking about in the process. It, it taking skills and developing master skills so that we can create strategy. And something that we talk about that Daryl and I came up with that athletic mission is, you know, when we our our process really to getting guys 
to mastering strategy, it's first they got to have clarity and understanding. So they got to know the what, where, when, why, and of what they're doing. And then they got to understand the how to of what they're doing. And if they don't have clarity and understanding, then we can't get to mastery. And if we can't get to mastery, then we really can't get to strategy because we don't have the, the master skilled to execute in a, in a real game. Yeah, and I think you nailed it. I think, but we got to really try to reinforce to these young players that mastery is not perfection. Right. We can perfect a tactic, we can perfect a drill and not translate to the mound, either in the bullpen or in a real game or in the box as a hitter. And I think that's where we've got caught up into. We, there's so much information, and a lot of it's good information right. about a specific piece or tactic or drill or uh, an aspect of what we're trying to develop that that once we master our mechanics, for instance, then we feel like we're automatically going to become uh, um, high velocity, you know, consistently executing great pitches. And the truth is mechanics is just the base of, of how we develop a pitch. And it's just the foundation of what has consistently got to happen for me to be able to even execute a pitch. And so we got to start con- uh, having these conversations about how do we elevate individual mastery and that it's really not about perfection. It's just about your process of, of really understanding how you control your body, how you consistently do something. And then can we command the way we do it? And I think that piece then is kind of, a, it, it does become a skill set, but at the same time, Jeff, I think it really, that's the piece that becomes individualized. We got to get out of that compare and convince mindset and really get into the compete and contribute mindset. What do I got to do to compete? And how do I really go through what you and I call the boring practice, the yep. grind practice, the right. stuff that we work through that is, it, it seems like we should make it more fun. But the truth is the brain don't want it to be more fun. The brain wants to understand it, have clarity and understanding as we're trying to develop mastery. And, and every time we change it up or switch it or change our mechanics or change something, then the brain kind of starts all over again. And I think that's where a lot of these players are confused. They have the physical capability, but they have a hard time getting the mastery because every time they struggle a little bit, they want to go back in and change their mechanics. And a lot of times that's not it. It's like what you said, they're not seeing the ball or they're not feeling their pitches or their grip wrist and forearm angle might not be on time. And that's all that the, that needs to be adjusted. We don't need to start all over. And I think if we can get that mindset shift of understanding what is a foundational competitive advantage and then, okay, how do I develop my unique skills that's going to give me the ability to go create a strategy and play in a real game? I think now people and coaches and parents and players are starting to see this process tied together. Right. And one thing that you see all over the country and all over the Internet is guys going from one guru to the next guru to the next guru, to the next guru, thinking that that next guru has the silver bullet that they're missing. And right. really, like you said, you're just confusing the heck out of the brain yeah. when you do that. So what guys are Absolutely. really needing is clarity and understanding. And once you have that, then you can get to, to mastery. But, you know, here here's the thing that I feel like you and I are getting really good at is we're getting really good at helping guys understand where they're at. Because yep, yep. everyone's trying to chase the next thing, and that's not who yep. they are right now. You know, and they and they got to train and they got to practice where they are at and then have a strategy and have a strategic advantage baseball process, which repeat year after year based on where guys are at. So... We have to get to this understanding that chasing the next thing is not where it is at because you're just confusing the brain and, and, and you never get to, the, to that mastery that we need. And that this is where you and I, are, we're trying to push the thing that, so yeah, that think, we can yep. help more guys get their unique hitting and pitching skills or, or their advanced hitting and pitching skills so that they can really advance. Absolutely. And I think that's probably a good place to wrap up this one. It's really about your current state assessment and being honest with yourself, where you're really at, the things that you need to focus on. And again, as we talked about before, 
these four stages of the strategic advantage baseball process and developing a strategic advantage mindset happens every year. This is not something that is just this career kind of driven process. Right. This happens every year. You're going to go through the off season. You're going to go through the preseason. You're going to go through getting ready to play in real games. And so this thought process of how do I develop? How do I get better? How do I master my skill set? And then what opponents am I facing? And how do I go out and execute against them is a process that you and I teach here for players to go through every year. And as they get older and more mature and, and develop more advanced skills, then obviously the level that they can play at and their ability to compete against the best players anywhere improves. And, and then that's when the attention starts coming. And ultimately that's what players and parents are really wanting anyway, is how do we sit here and, and develop into a complete player that can play at whatever the highest level they want to compete at. Yep. And this is going to conclude this podcast of the unique hitting and pitching skills. And uh, if you like this podcast, please go ahead and and uh, leave us a review and visit strategic-baseball.com to join our list. Um, in the next episode, we're going to go deeper into the strategic advantage mindset. And this is the stuff that we're really excited to share. And uh, we look forward and we'll see you then. Mm-hmm.